everyone to be able to get the picture. Those who went through the landing of Space Shuttle 1 remember this very well. It's a, it's a procedure that's been developed in the American space program over the years. But uh, we see there the time down to deorbit uh, 45 seconds before they go into the deorbit burn that they, uh, the astronauts are flying upside down and backwards, coming out of space. They have to go through uh, a perilous period, a dangerous period. When they lose the communications, and there will be a period in which communications are out, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're in any danger. Uh, we'll explain a little bit later why that communications uh, loss is not uh, only necessary, uh, it, it simply happens. But that doesn't mean they're in danger. But it is a dangerous period without overstating it. Two lives at stake as they come out of uh, outer space and try to enter the uh, inner space of the Earth's atmosphere. That's what's about to happen. Seven, six, five seconds to go to deorbit burn. Let's pick up uh, the voices. Now, duration of that maneuver, two minutes, 55 seconds. Slowing Columbia enough so that it drops out of orbit for landing at Edwards Air Force Base. We've started the entry interface clock here in the control center. It's reading 27 minutes to entry into the Earth's atmosphere for Columbia. We'll get a report on this uh, deorbit burn when uh, Columbia reaches the Yargity tracking station in Australia. We're uh, about seven minutes away from acquisition there. Two days, five hours, 14 minutes. This is shuttle control, Houston. What you're seeing is animation. This is animation of what is happening with the astronauts and the spaceship Columbia. The first, the only spacecraft ever to leave Earth, go into space, return to Earth, and then go back into space. The deorbit burn, uh, when it is finished, and we expect it to be finished in about another, how long, Bonnie, would you say? Well, it looks like we're about two minutes or so into it. It should be very soon. Again, these are the same engines that we used uh, shortly after launch to put us into the higher orbit. We're now bringing us back into a lower orbit that is uh, 141 nautical miles by minus two mi nautical miles again. Those engines were off when the spacecraft was circling the Earth. That's true. They're used to get them into space and then used again to get them back down out of space. We're waiting for official word that the deorbit burn has been completed successfully. Everyone, of course, keeping their fingers crossed and uh, hoping that all goes well and has gone well in this deorbit burn. There's no indication that things have not gone exactly according to plan. Now, and just to give you an idea of where we are, this burn is occurring about halfway between Africa and Australia. As soon as the astronauts come out of this uh, deorbit burn, the spacecraft will be uh, put into a different attitude to face that tremendous friction and heat that will come as it begins hitting the atmosphere of the Earth. Awaiting word from the mission control communicators as to whether the deorbit burn has been successfully completed. We'll pick up the crew again uh, on Australia at the Yargadi uh, ground station. Those the uh, faces and the machines at Mission Control in Houston uh, monitoring the spacecraft as it goes through this deorbit burn period. Bonnie Dunbar, is it fair to say that this is one of the most dangerous periods for the astronauts on the mission? I know that you and everyone at NASA keeps emphasizing that every possible safety precaution is taken, but we know in the first 25 or 30 seconds a blast off is a dangerous time for the astronauts. We know that the deorbit burn is a dangerous period. Is it fair to say that it is the second or third most dangerous period for them? I, I, I think that would be difficult to say. Uh, before this burn was started, we checked out the systems. Uh, we uh, directionally control these engines with some gimbals, and they're checked out. A gimbal is what? Uh, a gimbal is a, a, a method, a, a, well, let's, let's take a hydraulically uh, powered method of steering the engine. Again, it's, it's like your car. You go the direction opposite of where you're pushing, <laughs> okay? And that's what we're doing with these engines. Uh, we've, we've pointed them a certain direction. They're going to slow us down. So we care 
about that, but uh, we have a lot of confidence in that. I think what you're concerned about possibly is the lack of communication, and we should pick that up. Uh, at about entry interface minus 20 minutes, and I would say that's within about a couple minutes from now. We should be hearing from the astronauts again within a couple of minutes uh, from now. Mm -hmm. Now, to put, uh, make sure that uh, perhaps even those who have stuck with us understand that it will be uh, something less than an hour now before landing at Edwards Air Force Base, there's much that has to be done once this deorbit burn uh, is completed. We should emphasize that the spacecraft will be landed manually, uh, this time as it was the last time that Joe Engel will be at the controls of uh, Columbia as it comes down at the Edwards Air Force Base. If any difficulty develops with the weather, uh, the next uh, probable landing site will be White Sands, New Mexico, but it certainly looks like that they'll be coming down at Edwards, doesn't it? I think that uh, given the conditions at the present time, the fact that we've got a deorbit burn, that we'll be coming into Edwards. Any indication that anything has gone outside the schedule at any time this afternoon? No, I, I don't see anything. Uh, I'm not aware of it. Uh, sounds nominal. The crew would have to be a little disappointed about coming down three days before they had planned to do so, but they do have the consolation of having accomplished just about all of the experiments and the, the scientific experiments as well as those of the spacecraft that they'd uh, been put up there to, to do. Mm -hmm. I feel uh, that uh, just as I believe the NASA management has said, we've co accomplished about 90 percent of our objectives. CBS News coverage will uh, continue after this pause for station identification. <laughs>